There has got to be a better way to learn to do this. Every year there are tens of thousands of flight nurses, medical students, PAs, CRNAs who need to learn how to intubate. Obviously, as you saw, that's not something we can do on each other, and there comes simulation. Today, we're going all the way back to 350 BCE to Alexander the Great. You see, Alexander the Great saw one of his soldiers on the battlefield, suffocating. He could not breathe. So what did he do? He took his sword out and plunged it straight into his neck. That opened up his airway and was essentially a cricothyrotomy, which we will see later today, and it saved the soldier's life. Now, intubation in Latin literally means to put a tube into an orifice, and that's exactly what we're doing, but it took some time through history to get there. In 1788, Charles Kite was credited with saving many lives out of the Thames River by taking a bent tube and helping to ventilate drowning victims. Around the same time, another physician, Chaucer, came up with a similar bent tube that had a sponge on the end. Think forward to our endotracheal tubes now with an inflatable cuff. That's the idea. Now, all of these physicians were still doing this blind. That is until Benjamin Guy Babington came up with the glottoscope. A Sir Robert McIntosh and Robert Miller started their work on their own laryngoscopes. That's the Mac and Miller you know today. While ultimately both blades still exist, the Macintosh design, I would say, primarily won out and was subsequently turned into video laryngoscopes, such as this ProView right here. But now that we know the history behind laryngoscopy and intubation, cue up the world of simulation. So it's time to bust out the video laryngoscope. We have our video screen over here. We're gonna be using uh, ProView's video scope, so thank you for sending that over. And we're gonna use the classic Mac 4. We won't be needing that. So let's take a look around the airway. You're gonna get a couple views here, a view from above, myself right here, and of course the view of the intubating screen. So I'm gonna do this off angle a little bit for you. So we have the mouth and things are gonna look upside down. So we put the blade in, of course, with the curve following. So we're gonna scissor the mouth open and you can see how real that looks when we scissor open. We're gonna pass the blade and there's not much to see on the video screen. Here we go. Now we're gonna pass the blade down, slowly working it down the side of the tongue there. And as it goes down, we're just gonna advance around the curve and we can see the epiglottis starting to come into view there. I'm gonna back the blade up a little bit and get it right in that vollecula. You see that space? So some airway anatomy, there's our uvula, the back of our throat. Of course, on the bottom of the image is actually coming from the nasal passage. So if we were nasally intubating, that's where we would expect a tube to pop out. But if we look, there's the, the papillae at the base of the tongue here. We're gonna ride down the back of the tongue. There's that epiglottis. And we wanna shoot for that space between the tongue and the epiglottis. That's called the vollecula. So we're getting there, we're getting there. We need to get our blade up a little bit. It's kind of caught on the back. There we go. And now we're in there. We can start to lift towards the corner of the room. And that is just the sound of the mannequin's head moving here. Um, there's our vocal folds. So you can kind of see it pop in. So a little bit of a floppy airway. We can kind of move it around here to get a different view, but I kind of like that. It's a little bit challenging. So we have our tube bent already. Now again, we're gonna watch our screen, feed the tube in from the side here, and you can see we're starting to come right up and a little bit of obstruction there uh, with the camera, but we have our, our balloon and we're passing right through those vocal folds and now's the time to kind of pop that stylet out a little bit and sometimes we need to rotate and there is no lube on this tube, so it's a little harder to get through, but uh, there you go. Um, this is the balloon and it's down and that's it going up and completely occluding the trachea so that's inflated and then we can of course deflate it as we need to move it around and we would want that to a little bit further but we're watching it pass right into the airway we know that that is not in the esophagus and of course we withdraw our stylet the whole way inflate our cuff detach it and we would be done one of the things that i love about this mannequin is how realistic it is when you inflate the pressure and so forth so let me push that uh, balloon up, probably a little too much air, we'll, we'll leave it there. Um, so we have our cup is inflated. We have our Ambu bag, of course we could connect this to oxygen, but we're ready to go. So let's hook this up here and let's do some ventilation. And you can see, of course we visualize, so we know, we know this is in the right spot, right? But we can see here that our lungs are inflating. The lungs are puffing up, no problem. Now you've probably heard of goosing a tube, which is to say gooseneck or putting it in the 
esophagus. That's essentially what this is referring to. It's going in our food pipe. Obviously our lungs are not there. That's why there are three balloons on this mannequin. So let's go back to our video camera and we're gonna go back in the airways. And I'm gonna intentionally put the tube in the wrong place here. And I'm gonna put it down in that esophagus. I'm just gonna work it in there. And again, this is not the right placement. We know it's not the right placement because if we back up, we can see we're not in the vocal folds, but I wanna show you what happens here. So we can leave everything here. We're gonna, we're gonna leave the blade in and I'm gonna grab my bag and I want you to watch what happens here. I'm gonna inflate, see which bag is inflating. All we're doing is blowing the stomach up right now. The patient is not being ventilated and they're filling up their stomach. There's gastric contents, there's risk of that all coming back up, vomiting and aspirating. So very real, most mannequins will show you whether you're in the lungs or in the stomach, but I've never had one that's this distinct to where it will only inflate. I mean, it has a very good seal around the tube and you're getting no airflow into the lungs. So this is very quick for a learner to figure out, am I in the lungs or I, am I in the esophagus inflating the stomach? This makes it super clear. So we have our 11 blade here. We're going to feel that spot. Okay, I feel the spot and I'm going to make it incision straight down. Okay, I'm gonna come back, cross. Now, I should be able to feed this in to the hole that I made and pierce, I did, pierce the trachea. Okay, we're gonna have to widen it a little bit because I can't get the tube in. We're just gonna widen out the sides. Let's see if that helped. We'll refeed the tube here and we're gonna try and pass it. We're in, we're in. Aha, just barely, just barely, but we're in and we'll confirm that we can ventilate the lungs right now. Aha, we did it. Let's see here, yeah, we can see I did some, some damage there, but we're in the right spot. We're in the cricothyroid membrane, maybe a touch low, um, but we got in. We got in and we did what we had to do. And so there's a lot of techniques for this. I have limited supplies obviously here, but as a simulation mannequin, that's pretty impressive that I can do this. And then I can actually take this piece out and I can sub it in with one of those new tracheas that came in the box. First thing I noticed with this mannequin is just how real the skin actually feels. The jaw moves in a very natural manner. The head pivots here in a very natural manner. And the skin in general just is more close to what we're used to. Some of the problems that I used to have with mannequins is that they just felt so rigid and stiff. The head would barely move. It only had one motion and that was to do a head tilt chin lift. It didn't move in other axes. This has a little bit of left to right motion. It'll certainly go up and down. You can actually change the entire position. So there's a ton of flexibility here and that just adds to the realism. You can see here, I'm just gonna hold it so that it's not sliding around. Can literally lift this head off with the laryngoscope and it's not gonna break that suction. So all the force I applied, even in practical application, it's not gonna move. From a direct laryngoscopy perspective, it feels real scissoring the mouth. You have to watch out for the soft lip here. Um, you know, you do have that, that kind of tendency to get the lip caught between the blade and the teeth and you can damage the lip. So um, it's kind of nice to remember that the tongue will sweep left and right in here. And so that also gives an added component of realism here. So with that said, let's figure out, is this admit, observe or discharge? Well, I haven't come up with a good name for my buddy yet, but he really deserves a name. It's been incredible to go through the process of just how amazing this mannequin is, the anatomy accuracy, how well it works with all of my equipment. I think you can tell where I'm going with this one and it's gonna be an admit for me. I was blown away by the accuracy of this model and how easy it was to intubate and feel similar to a real intubation. I think many of the mannequins I used as a young medical student were just super inaccurate and felt nothing like the real thing. But as someone who now has done many intubations over the last few years, this actually feels pretty close to the real thing. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.